welcome to another react video and today we're going to be exploring something quite interesting and it's going to be about react life cycles if you've never heard of them they're actually really good things to use whenever you're doing certain things but anyway long story short let's go ahead and get our hands dirty for some of you guys that don't know we are currently using the create react app in this session if you don't know how to use it i've done a video before definitely check it out i would highly recommend you guys use it it's okay on the top right corner above but anyway long story short let's start by having a component and i have something like this that's a welcome to my app all right so what are react life cycles they are hooks that you can put to your component but in reality the way i kind of like to explain them think about them as an event just the same way you had in click event right when the user click on a button something happened well react life cycles are similar like event but they're a little bit different they are even that are attached to a component what do i mean by this well they are even that are listening to the react component themselves they listen to when the component uh, existed or when the component mount when the component on mount when the component did mount and all if this not makes sense for you guys don't worry we're going to go over every single one in details let's take the first look at something that said uh component will on mount component will on mount what does this one does uh, we're going to go ahead and define a function and we're going to keep it as es6 and i'm just going to go ahead and console log uh hello world all right, let's take a look at this. This one itself, check this out. When the component mount, it mount, what that means is when the component load, it's going to listen to whenever the component will no longer exist or AKA will no longer unmount. Check this out. When I refresh the page, now it knows the component mount and also when the component no longer exists, it's gonna fire a uh, hello world because the component is considered as unmount. On mod, think about it as when the component no longer existed. And this is one of the reason that this uh, this life cycle fires itself. It's called the component will on mount. What if we wanted to also listen for whenever the component did mount, which means whenever the component mount into the page, what if we wanted to listen to know when the component was successfully loaded to the page well there's another event i'm going to go ahead and comment this one for now and there's another one called component did mount console log component did mount all right so for this one itself this one's gonna wait whenever the component finish loading inside the state and then it will go ahead and fire now one thing you can notice here is you, you you see the component mount first and then and then it fires well if we want to to console log and see this in action let's go inside the render let's say uh, i am the render function all right so let's put it this way so what's going to happen in anything inside the render is going to happen first and then anything inside the component did mount function is going to execute all right let's take a look at now check this out you see i am the render function happen first and then the component did mount happen and the reason we're not seeing our component is because i instantly inside this function to remove it so i'm going to go ahead and uncomment this function for now which will not remove our component all right let's find out you see i am the render function first and then component did mount now one thing i'd like to mention down here here over here this is when you guys do all of your ajax call which means if you want to to do any sort of api calls you want to go ahead and call some data and you know call some services and different other things this is when you guys happen to do all of your api calls all right we have something else that's called component wheel mount component will mount what what is this one well this one itself it's something that actually fires before the render function okay so that means before this render function execute anything that is inside this code is going to execute let's console log in and find out i am uh let's just say component will mount all right so if we're looking at this we're gonna technically say all right 
component will mount going to execute first because it's going to execute before the render and then what we expecting to see after this component did mount we will see the console log i am the render function and then we should be able to see component did mount let's take let's take a look at it and there you guys can see component will mount execute first which is this one this is a component life cycle that happens before the render function and then after that we see i'm the render function and then we see component did mount now for some of you you might have the tendency and say all right sterling well you told me that i can do ajax call inside of component did mount which is something that happened after the render function what if instead before my render function i can execute my component will mount ajax call which means i have a transact an api transaction that is going to execute before my component did mount and by the time it mounts and then i can do further things well the reason i'm not recommending for you to do this is because we cannot be certain that the ajax transaction or ajax calls or api calls will finish after the component mount well if it happens before our component mount we won't have any state to work with and it's going to be a chaotic world now it might work in some cases but i would not recommend for you guys to do it because we can't be guaranteed that this this api transaction will happen after the component did mount there are cases that might be happening before it so i would not recommend it one thing i would recommend for sure is i would recommend you do any api transaction inside this component life cycle all right guys so so far we talk about three life cycle which we uncomment this one uh, uncomment this one out i'm gonna go ahead and comment this order two and actually introduce you guys a new one there's a new one that's called component did update component did update what is this life cycle well this is a life cycle that's actually listened to any time that something updated inside our component for example i can say uh, i can say console log component did update all right, so for this one, in order for us to be able to see it, I'm going to go ahead and have a state down here. And this state is going to be just the username that we're going to have. And I'm going to set the username to my username. And by the way, this is one of my most username online. For some reason, I like it. Anyway, long story short, I'm going to set up a button here. And this button, we're going to set it to change username. And on click, that's when we going to update the state. I'm going to set it to a function. And we don't have this function yet. I'm going to say it update uh, update username. Now I'm going to define this function right after this component. It doesn't matter if it's above it or not. Uh, it does not matter. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and use this function to change my state. And I'm going to change the username to equal to Patrick. Okay. And now just for visually, uh, just for you guys to be able to see this, I'm going to go ahead and display my username down here. And then I'm going to go ahead and say that username. We should be able to now see it. All right, let's see what we have, okay? We have a welcome to my app. The username is now is equal to Patrick. And uh, the reason we see this is because uh, I'm the render function is being displayed here. So we no longer need it. We can go ahead and delete it. All right, so here's this lifecycle hook. This itself listen to whenever the state update. If the state update, it will listen to it. Let's find out. When I click this function, it should update the state, okay? Which means this component lifecycle is going to fire because the state has been updated. Let's find out. And ladies and gentlemen, you see that it fires because some data are changing inside our state and now it's equal to Patrick. This is an idea on when you might consider using it. All right, guys, but there's one thing I'd like to show you guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and comment these lines of code here. Check this out, okay? So when the page refresh, when the page, let's refresh the page. When the page refresh, I have I am the render function. So when I clicked on this and the component update, check this out again. The I am the render function execute and then it knows that could the component it did update. Well, we have a node life cycle. Instead of component did update, this one itself, it's called component will update. And this is it. All right. So what this one does is before the render function, before, uh, after it update the state, before the render function execute, it knows that the component will be updated. Check this out. Once again, we have the render function that execute, but when we click this button, you see this itself happened before the render function 
and then the render function execute. Now, all of these lifecycle component will update, component did update, or think that listen for when the component is about to be updated. Comment this one, and the other one that I'd like to mention, it's something that called component will receive props. Now, for this one, I will show you how it works. Let's say we have another component. For example, we have Heather component that is being extended from the React component. So I'm going to go ahead and react that component here. And within this one, I'm going to have a method here called render. And I'm going to have my JSX down here. And I can go ahead and return. And it's just say something like, I am the Heather component. Something very basic. And I'm going to use this component inside. I'm going to go ahead and use this component inside my app component like so and i end up having something that visually look like that i am the header component right well this component i'm gonna pass it a prop called name and i'm gonna make name equal to my name something like axiomy sterling and within the header component i'm gonna go ahead and receive this one as prop i'm gonna say name is equal to uh, this uh, this that props that name that's how it's going to come all right and we should see something like this this is the header component this is I'm Sterling and just to kind of illustrate this point I can set up like an href tag uh, actually actually set up an HR tag just to kind of separate component as a line all right so here's my app component and here's the header component now it's receiving the prop called easter line axiom right well what if the component will receive prop those let's actually display them here it's component will receive props and i can say i am com uh, component will receive Props. All right, let's try. Let's find this out here. Let's see. When the page reload, we no longer see component will receive prop. Well, when does it work? When does this life cycle work? Well, this life cycle work whenever, for example, if we were sending out some. Oh, sorry, guys. All right. For example, inside the prop, if we were sending something that was inside the state, for example, here, I'm sending the username that is inside the state. Now, if you guys remember the username. Here's the username, right? Well, this username change whenever we click this button. This is when this username will change. Uh, well, this component will receive props. Let's see. This component will receive prop only work when the props is updated. For example, if we now click this one, this will go ahead and update the state username with Axiom Sterling. And remember, this state that username is actually sending out as a prop. Now, which means this state updated, the value of the prop is now updated. And now check this out. If I click this, then the function will fire because the prop value changes from what value it was to an entire new value. So this is when you guys use this component lifecycle call component will receive props. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and delete the header component for now because there's another uh, lifecycle that I'd like to introduce with my sounds a little bit confusing, but it's actually in reality. It is a really, really, really important one. It helps with a lot of performance issue. All right. So the last one is something called should component update. And this one itself, the way it works is it does some logic. It does some conditional logic. It checks for some sort of conditional logic. It does, it checks for something and decide what should happen. Now, it, do, it has to return a balloon, which means it has to return true if the component should be updated. And if it returns false, which means the component will never be able to update. Now, let's take a look at the false scenario, okay? All right, let's find out. It return false. Now check this out. When I try to click change username in our case, when we click this button, where's the function? When we click this button, here's the function. The function is going to update the state and then we render the component. But currently this life cycle is equal to false, which means the component will never be able to update because this is evaluating to false. Now check this out. If I click this button, we still have it equal to 
Aximus Sterling because our component will never be able to be updated. But if we set it to true, then we should be able to update our component. Check this out. When I click this function, now it allows our component to be updated. Now we use this one for performance. This component lifecycle itself takes two parameters. The first one is equal to next props, and the second one is equal to next state. So what this means is it can do some sort of conditional logic to check what is the most uh, what is the currently uh, what is the value that the state has and what is the new value of the state what do i mean by this let's say for any reason we wanted to check and see if the username if state that uh, is this state that username is not equal to next state uh oops next state that username so if they're not equal if they're not equal which means if i check and see it's trying to update the state but the value that i had in the state is not equal with the new value so i would like for us to be able to update it else then i don't want to be updating the state so this might sound confusing i do have an entire audio video about this function itself but the bottom line is guys it's checking and see the existing value from the username and what is the new value if they're not the same then i would like to update the state with the new value well if they are the same then i don't want to update the value with the state let's find this out for example if i click this one again you see it now allow me to change it because the value is not the same but what if i wanted to change it with the axiomy sterling again like i wanted to kind of change it with axiomy sterling well the fact it's not the same it's not going to let me to change it because you know it's already axiomy sterling there is no need for me to change it so that's one of the beauty about this once again guys this is the component lifecycle that can have the decision either or not your components should be updated and not now this also compare it with props you can see if you want to see if there's any prop that's coming in i can go ahead and do props and then i can log out the next prop and i can also log out the next state i can say this is going to be prop and this is going to be state and i can log out the state just for you guys to see what are the data that are coming in now for my prop i'm actually passing a prop if i go over the index.js this is what i'm calling the app i'm going to go ahead and pass it a prop probably name is actually equal to patrick something like that and now check this out when i click this function and then it also get access to the prop that are coming in and get access for the state let's actually go ahead and, co and comment all of them just to kind of show you guys everything we talk about and i will actually add a new one here is component will receive props because we don't have it down here all right and we can console log uh, When we say prop. All right, so we talk about component will mount, which is something that happened before the render function, and we also talk about component did mount, which is something that happened after the render function. And the recommended way to do API calls, we have to do it inside component did mount. This is where we fetch any data that in case we want to fetch. So we talk about component will on mount, which is the fact that if our a component will no longer be inside the state will be on mount and then this is a really good event to kind of check either or not our component will be on mount we talk about component did mount which is after our component finish mounting which is after the render function and we also talk about component will on mount which is before the render function we also talk about component will update which is something that happened before the state update we also talk about component did update i don't have it here so i can go ahead and, and kind of component Component did update. We also talk about component did update, which is something that actually happens after the component finish updated. And we also talk about component will update, which is something that happened before. And we also talk about component will receive prop, that is when whenever the new prop value is being updated. Well, I hope that makes sense for you guys. If you have any question, please definitely reach out to me. I'll leave some comment below and, 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 and maybe maybe I forgot to talk about one of them. Feel free to leave some comment below just to kind of experience which one that we might have not talked about.